morning. Welcome to the Ventura Vineyard online church service. Happy Mother's Day as well. We're so glad you were able to join us. My name is Kathy and I'm your service host for today. And I'm going to begin by telling you how we're going to do our service today. Again, a warm welcome. Hey, I just remembered. How'd you do on that quiz? I got 8 out of 10. Hopefully some of you got 10 out of 10. How about Moses' mother's name? Did you know her name? Did you know it was Jochebed? I forgot. It's such an interesting and different name. Anyway, we're glad you're here. So let me tell you how we're going to go about our service today. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and have some worship by Chris and Ashley. From there, I'm going to come back, give us some announcements, and take our offering. And then Brian White, a member of our teaching team, will give us a message today, which is going to be really wonderful and comforting, and you'll see why in a little bit. From there, we'll have some more worship and end with a benediction and some prayer. Thank you so much for being here. Now I'm just going to go ahead and turn it over to Chris and Ashley. Hey, good morning, everybody. Glad to be here with you uh, digitally. And we're going to lead you in some music this morning. Uh, this first song that we're going to do, it's super well known for all of us, called Holy Spirit. And it's just a song asking for the Spirit to be here with us. And I can't think of a better way to start the morning, so we'll sing this together. Yeah. 
Hey, thanks Chris and Ashley for that. This is the time in the service where I get to tell you a little bit more about our church and how to connect with us. So if you have a smart device, you can open up to our Ventura Vineyard app. It's a great place to connect. It's in fact, probably the best and easiest way to connect with us. There are four tiles I wanna specifically point out to you. The first one is the blue connect card. If you're new to us, we'd love to hear from you, maybe get some feedback from you and have you give us some of your information, like how you found out about us. And we're just so glad that you're here. For some of you that are members of Ventura Vineyard already, maybe you have a change of contact information. We'd love to hear about that as well. From there, the prayer and care tile. That is the tile where you can request for prayer. And if you need real-time prayer, we'd be happy to reach out to you. Just let us know on that little form that you fill out in that tile, and someone will reach out to you and pray for you. If you don't want real-time prayer, that's okay too. You can just go ahead and list a prayer request and our prayer team will be in prayer for you. The third tile I wanna bring out to you is the COVID-19 tile. We've talked about this in the past, but it's a great tile. It's very succinct about how Ventura Vineyard has been responding to this COVID-19 crisis, really. Um, in that app are, is so much information that'll be really helpful to you. It, I want to 
specifically bring your attention to the community care fund if you're at a place where you're able to give to that fund we would really appreciate it because what we're trying to do is if folks in our own community have needs financial needs then we'd like to use that fund to support them at this time lastly the last tile I want to talk about is the giving tile if you go to that open it up you'll see that it has a place for you to give just regularly a lot of people in our fellowship use that it's really easy to do or if you want to give a one-time gift you know we still even though we can't meet face to face we still have bills to pay we have rent to make so please if you can continue to give regularly we appreciate that i'm going to go ahead and take this time to pray for our offering now if you can pray with me god thank you so much that you are close thank you that you love us so much God, we give you the offerings that will be coming. Father, we ask for your wisdom to know what to do with those, how to give to our community, how to be a source of comfort and strength to those in need. We look to you, Jesus, and we offer them to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, so a special announcement is that on next Saturday, May 16th at 11 a.m., mark your calendars, the questions that you all put forward for our town hall meeting will be answered at that time. So our YouTube channel, just go to that just like you're here for this service and we will answer those questions or our leadership team will answer those questions for you. And so put it on your calendar, 11 a.m. We'll look forward to seeing you then. So this is the time in the, in the, in the service where I get to introduce the person I'll be giving our message today, and that is Brian White. We've been doing a series on the Holy Spirit here at the Ventura Vineyard. It's been fabulous. And today, Brian will be sharing a little bit about how the Holy Spirit is the comforter. Really special, very needed message. I think you would probably agree. I appreciate Brian. He's got such a, a big heart for the body of Christ and our community. And I love how he can give away the message with wittiness and cleverness, and yet he can be serious when he knows he needs to be. But I so appreciate Brian. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Brian White. My name is Brian, and I'll be uh, giving the message this morning. It's, uh, it's an exhortation. It's a pointing at several scriptures uh, that I hope you find uh, illuminating. So I'd like to start off with a question. How are you? How are you? Really? How are you? For, for some of you, you may want to give the... Uh, obligatory answer of, eh, I'm fine. Uh, for others, you may have a multitude of words, a, a, a lack of words in terms of volume to describe how you're feeling. Uh, for some of you, you may have no words at all. This is a uh, difficult time. It's a, it's a weighty time. And that's a hard question. It, it, it reminds me a lot of when my family, uh, we were missionaries uh, in Russia. Uh, we spent a year in Siberia, as many of you know. Uh, but when we left Siberia, we took trains, planes, and automobiles, basically, to do it. Uh, we flew from Siberia to St. Petersburg, and then we uh, took a cab to a bus station, and then we took a bus to Finland, and then we took a ferry to Sweden, and then we took another train across Sweden, and then took another boat to the United Kingdom, and then we finally flew home to the United States. But it didn't stop there. We then took a train across the United States to get home to California. So it was a bit of a circuitous what route, to be sure. Um, but I remember 
I, I, till the day I leave this earth, I will never forget the feeling of what it was like to leave Russia after a year. We were there from 93 to 94, and so two words are associated with that time, uh, perestroika and glasnost. Uh, they have two different meanings, but they're kind of a, encapsulated in this. It was a, a freedom uh, of economy. Uh, for the first time, the Russian economy was open, wide open, and there was an openness uh, in communication from the government, a, a transparency, if you will, um, on the side of what was before this, the, the Soviets. Um, it just simply became Russia. But, but with that, there was a lot of difficulty. Yes, the Russians were able to have uh, access to our media, find out about world events. Uh, the internet was just coming online. But with that came the devaluation of their currency. And so economically, it was, it was a crushing period for most of the Russians. Uh, I remember a friend of mine, my translator, Sergei, saying to me that it, it all it was was the trading of a dog bull, that the people were dogs and that we were just given a different color. One was communism and now it was capitalism. Anyway, it was a heavy time and, and I'll be honest, I don't know that I appreciated it until the moment that we crossed the border. Now, we did it by bus, and so it was four different border crossings to leave Russia. Uh, it was striking, quite frankly. Uh, each stop, there was a, a Russian border guard that would come on the bus, check our papers, check our visas, our passports. Uh, we would, he would be slung up with a Kalashnikov rifle, a stern look on his face, you know, the Russian hat, every, everything you would expect. Uh, everything you've seen in documentaries and in the movies, th that was our reality as we crossed. When we hit the border in Finland and we stepped across that border, I could feel the weight lift from my shoulders. I remember the Finnish border guards who were in stark difference to the Russians. They looked like Boy Scouts. Uh, they had like casual khakis on, uh, a little sweater vest. Uh, they were friendly uh, as we let our family into their country. But I'll never forget that weight coming off my shoulders. This time uh, feels very similar to that, that there is something pressing down on us. So let me change gears. Uh, I'm going to try to frame the question in a little different way, uh, a little bit of uh, levity to the, the heaviness of this moment. If you were to pick a mascot, you know, a mascot uh, defined as uh, an uh, animal or object that represents who you are, what would that mascot be? Hmm? Think about that. Well, here's mine, Team Brian. Yeah. You'll see three images there. The first one of the Tasmanian devil, he looks confused, bewildered, lost. That's me most of the time. Uh, the second image shows him just angry. And yes, there are moments, especially when I, we're out for our afternoon walk and somebody goes by me too fast or their motorcycle is too loud. I just have these spikes of anger. <laughs> I don't know why. And then they just go away. Gain control. And then the last is just busyness. Uh, I'm like a whirling dervish. I, I'm running at 100 miles an hour. I, I'm getting a lot of projects done at home. So it's great. So, how about you? What, what would your mascot be? Uh, maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's a bear. You know? hibernating. Maybe, as my son said, a sloth. Or no, I'm sorry, that was Kathy. My son said a hyena. He just wants to laugh everything, laugh at everything and chase it. Uh, maybe it's a empty couch covered in crumbs. <laughs> Mascots are largely, as I've said, chosen to reflect the community that they represent. Uh, on the screen right now should be our local high schools. Uh, 
you'll recognize, you know, Santa Paula High, Joe Cardinal, uh, the dogs and cats of Buena and Ventura, uh, the dragon of Foothill, the, the yellow jacket of Oxnard. Um, these uh, embody, or at least the ideals, uh, of their individual institutions. Here's my high school mascot. Speaking of mascots, yeah, that's right. Not very terrifying, I, I don't think. Never did. I always thought it was a little odd when we went to go play football games that our Susie Spirit or Sammy Spirit would wear a costume that looked like this. That's right. I went to Holy Spirit High. Paraclete, which is Latin for the Holy Spirit. That was my high school. That was my wife's high school. That's how we met. And these are our rings. If you look closely at the rings, you'll see that there is a, a dove on the side. And of course, this is the, the most, uh, the greatest image attributed, or the most used image attributed to the Holy Spirit. It comes from the baptism of Jesus by John, where uh, the dove came down, uh, and the voice from heaven said, this is my son who I love, with whom I am well pleased. Uh, paraclete means literally in Latin, called to one side. The paraclete, called to one side. Of course, there are other names attributed to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of glory, the Spirit of revelation, Spirit of God, Spirit of truth, Spirit of wisdom, Spirit of adoption, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of grace, uh, the Spirit, the Good Spirit, the Comforter. No matter what you call the Holy Spirit, Richard said something last week that I, that I really appreciated. No matter what you call the Holy Spirit, when you're dealing with Him, there will always be baggage and blunder that you bring with you. Baggage, blunder, and bias. The bulk of my baggage, blunder, and bias definitely comes from being a member of the Vineyard movement for 39 years. I first came to the Vineyard when I was 18 years old. I came from a, an evangelical background. And I came to the Vineyard, which if you are aware, probably have heard this, the Vineyard as a movement has always tried to walk in that place called the Radical Middle. And that is that road between uh, evangelical-based uh, like scriptural teaching and the charismatic and Pentecostal movement. Uh, there's a word for this, tension. Uh, that road becomes difficult to walk sometimes. Uh, it, it is... It is fraught with uh, some perils. It's fraught with high highs and, and even some low lows. And that's where my baggage comes from. Uh, the church that I attended when I was young definitely uh, went after the acts of the Spirit, uh, the, the charismatic side of things. And for me, coming from a background uh, of evangelical, when I first became a Christian at the age of 13, uh, my church, to describe it, I'll use uh, what we wore to go to church. Uh, my church, uh, we wore dress shoes, slacks, long sleeve shirt, and a tie. That's minimum on Sunday mornings. In the evening service, the second service of the day, because we always attended to, my mom, dad, and I, uh, you, you could go casual, which meant you could leave the tie at home. Uh, so to go from that to go to the freedom of the vineyard uh, was lovely. Learned how to pray to, for people. I learned uh, about uh, spending time with the Lord, the contemplative side of things. Uh, I saw many, many miracles. I also saw um, the other side, the side where people sought uh, the gifts instead of the giver some of the excesses, um, some of the baggage, and the blunder. When, you, when you're dealing uh, 
with the things of the Spirit, people can get in the way. Things can get messy. Right up front. The Holy Spirit is one of those topics. Oh, and I'll get to my bias here in a minute. Um, the Holy Spirit is one of those talk topics that you have to go to the Scriptures first. However, there'll always be uh, an experiential component to the subject. Now, why do I say this? Because the paraclete, according to the Scriptures, dwells in each believer in Christ. As individuals have experiences, they belong to them. And so we have the scripture in the text of how the Holy Spirit behaves, but it, it's different from each person's perspective. The, the one thing I learned early in dealing with the things of the Spirit was to ask the question, who does this glorify? If there's something that's being done in the name of God, in the name of the paraclete, who does it glorify? If it's not glorifying the giver, then you got to take a step back. There are many attributes, characteristics of the Holy Spirit. The one I'd like to focus on today is that of the comforter. How does he comfort us? Quite simply, by being with us individually always gifting us, always being present, and giving us gifts and then putting us into the body, the church, the body full of spirit, cares for us. Let's start out with us individually. Uh, I'll be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. This is verses 15 through 31. Um, these verses take place after Jesus have, has washed the feet of the disciples, and they sit down to the Last Supper. On your screen right now, there should be a, a picture of the Last Supper. Now, this is by Leonardo da Vinci. Everybody's familiar with it. It's pretty ubiquitous. Uh, this one actually, I think, is a retouched copy. It may have even been painted not by Leonardo, but by somebody in a back room someplace in Milan, or torrents, uh, but it definitely is the, the same image. Um, they're in the notes in the app. Uh, I'll have actually a book recommendation by the woman who's now 90 that restored, spent 20 plus years restoring uh, this. Um, now I'd like a, a slide to go up, a full picture of what it really looks like uh, in Milan. Jesus predicts Peter's denial. And then Jesus comforts his disciples, for he knows what's to come. He tells them about how he's prepared a place for them, a house with many rooms, that he and the Father are one. They are the same. And that the Father will send an advocate to be with us forever. As I read these verses... I ask you to picture yourself sitting at the Last Supper, hearing the words of Jesus, listening to the tone of his voice as he says these words. John 14, 15 through 31. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, 
not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not say much more to you, for the Prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. They leave and they go to the Garden of Gethsemane. What follows chapter 14 is the teaching about how we are connected like the vine and the branches. Jesus prays for himself. He prays for his disciples. He prays for his believers. Then he is arrested, executed, and raises from the dead. I really love this image that was just on the screen. It shows that the words that Jesus spoke continue to echo. The disciples are not frozen in tableau for eternity. They got up from the Last Supper. They got up after a, a bad bit of time. They got moving. They changed the world. They did it because of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that are one. Let's look again at a couple of verses in John. These are the two things that I want you to take with you. John 14, 23 says, Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. This, if you could imagine what it was like for the disciples sitting around that table and hearing these words. These were, were Jewish men. They knew the scriptures. They knew where God dwelt. And that was in the, in the holy tabernacle. It was, it was not outside of that, with the exception of of the words of the prophets. That's where the Spirit of God dwelt. And yet here's Jesus saying, no, the Spirit of God dwells in any who believe. That's, uh, that's way outside what they knew to be the truth. That, that is blowing up this idea of where God resides. not just in the temple or the prophets, but, but in each believer. You, me, God is with us believers. The advocate is right next to us. Um, that word advocate uh, that's used in the scripture has a very uh, specific meaning. It, it is uh, an attorney. And with it, it for me, it conjures an image of somebody like appearing before the Senate, right? They're being grilled by the senators. And at some point, uh, a tough question, especially tough question is asked. Maybe it's the question that may send this person to, to prison or uh, at least out the door in disgrace. And they cover the microphone and they turn to their counselor that is sitting right next to them. And the counselor leans over and you see maybe 
a wash of peace come over them. And as they uncover the mic, they lean forward and they respond to the query. And of course, this is a representation or a um, interpretation of, of this idea of the holy uh, trial that takes place where Satan accuses humanity before the Lord and the Holy Spirit acts as the advocate. Let's read together John 14, 23 one more time. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. My dog Chip, that sound you just heard, he was nodding his head in agreement. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So my bias, I said we'd get to this. My bias is simple, that in all my years of being a Christian, as loud of a person as I am, as busy as I am, I find that when it comes to the Holy Spirit, the advocate, when things get loud, I can't find him. It has to be quiet. It has to be sedate. That's when I find the Holy Spirit. It, it makes me think of Elijah in 1 Kings when he was searching for God in the whirlwind. But the scriptures say that God was in the silence. And in all these different uh, translations, these are the different ways they describe it, trying to capture what that means. A still small voice. This is from 1 Kings 9, 19, 11b through 12. A still small voice a sound of gentle blowing, a sound of sheer silence, a light murmuring sound, a delicate whispering voice, a thin silence, a gentle whisper. In order to have complete access to the Holy Spirit, you, you have to spend time with him. And it, it has to be quality time. And I, I think it has to be quiet time in his pr presence, connecting with him. These days, can be perfect for that, right? We're at home, but maybe not so perfect because maybe you have to teach kids. <laughs> maybe you uh, have multiple projects like I do. It doesn't just end there, spending time with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit gives us gifts and those gifts are meant to be used in the church as part of the body a place where we are shaped and we reflect God's image one to another. Romans 12, 4 through 8, you may recognize this, says this, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, from one form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts, according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, then lead diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. We are called by Christ to bring these gifts and do it together. If you're currently unemployed and you're running out of money, if uh, you're a essential worker, if you're struggling with isolation, you're alone, if you're sick, if you're in the position of having lost a loved one, these are the most difficult of times. If you're fortunate and none of these things apply to you, then you are just that, fortunate. Why does this COVID time feel so hard? There's a lot of reasons, but I think the main one is the loss of connection, the, the, the chance to be together. A meal, a shared meal, is just that. It's shared. It's, it's a chance to look across the table at someone else and not watch them 
on YouTube. A trip is not just a trip. It's not just a chance to go to some place and see cool stuff. I mean, that's part of it, but it, it's the experience. It's the chance to, to put yourself in a different situation, in a different culture, and to be surrounded by different people and hopefully share that with others. The chance to celebrate a milestone, a birthday, a, a birth, a, a graduation, a promotion, a chance to, to grieve together at a funeral. These are the things that are lacking now. The ability to touch the ones that we love. I'd like to rephrase my opening question right now. I asked, how are, how are you doing? I'd like you to answer this question. What are you doing? Because as believers in Christ, it goes much further. We are to be about the work. Social distancing and home isolation or being separate from others doesn't make it so that we're not the church. It, it makes it more difficult. That this, these logical steps that we're taking, but it doesn't make it impossible. So what are you doing? We're still called to be the church. We're called to practice the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given to us with each other. What are you doing with those gifts? I'd like to conclude now with a bit of scripture as a benediction. This is Colossians 3, 15 through 17. It's from the Message Translation. And then we'll have some worship. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this is of this going off and doing your own thing. And cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense and sing. Sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master, Jesus. Thanking God the Father every step of the way. Amen.
Well, that ends our Ventura Vineyard service for today. We're so glad you joined us. Couple reminders, make sure you join us on May 16th, Saturday, for our town hall meeting at 11 a.m. Also, please, if you need anything during the season, use the app to reach out to us, and or you can also contact us via email at contact at venturavineyard.org. Let me close with a benediction and prayer for us. I went ahead and took 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 and 4, and made that into a benediction for us. Let me read that to us. May you joyfully praise the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who alone can bring you peace and calm in all of your troubles. May you take the same comfort you have received and give it away to others who need solace, support, and relief. God bless you all. Have a good day.